Okay guys, I'm going to quickly go over the instructions for essay 5 and show you a few samples. So this will be an argumentative essay and for this essay I'm going to ask you to write completely in third person. So um, up to this point I've allowed you to use first person and um, that one time you could use second person. But the reason that we want you to keep this essay in third person is to help you transition over to um, next semester's requirements in English 1320. So this just gets you used to um, writing in that academic tone. Um, so instead of saying things like I think or I believe or, um, you know, according to my thoughts, just say um, this should be true or um, this is the way it should be. So, and I'll show you some examples of how that can look in an essay. Um, same MLA formatting rules and length as we've had um, for the last few papers. This is 100 points. Um, so, again, don't procrastinate. Make sure that you're staying on top of things. Remember to include a word count. And as far as topics, um, I give you a pretty long list for this one because for some reason people tend to have a hard time coming up with an argumentative topic that they like. Um, and it is, it should be something that you are convinced of yourself, so that can make it a little more tricky. If you choose a different topic, um, make sure you email about it, email me about it, and make sure that it has to be controversial, okay? It has to be an issue on which people take two sides. And also, the constraints of this paper, um, because we do no research, um, you know, you're arguing purely from examples, logic, reasoning, so some topics I won't approve just because they really require research are some of these very typical topics like abortion, capital punishment, steroids, gun control. Because to really argue that type of topic well, you've got to do research. So just be aware for that type of topic, I'm probably just going to say no um, as far as what you think of as the more typical argumentative research paper type topics. So some ideas. For topics you can argue um, just on your own reasoning. Um, you can see here that I give you a few options as far as topics that are pertinent to North Greenville. And here's the thing about that. You can argue either side of that. Whether or not students should be required to attend cultural events, should we have an attendance policy, should North Greenville have a beauty pageant, um, you know, if you want to come up with some other rule that you want to argue, that's fine. You just have to remember to leave um, I say you have to leave your attitude at the door because if you write it from the perspective of a disgruntled student, then it's not going to be a very strong argument. So just remember, you want to be as objective and reasonable as possible. Don't write that paper sounding like a whiny student. Um, and I'll let you read through these. Obviously, you have the assignment, but let me know if you have any questions about these topics. Um, all of these I've had students write on well in the past. Okay, so now let's look at a couple examples. So I did want to show you an example of a student trying to write on a topic pertinent to North Greenville and it not going well. Um, because if you take the wrong perspective or the wrong attitude on one of these topics, it can, um, it can go pretty badly. So this is this really dates the paper because we haven't had this rule at North Greenville in a few years. But several years ago, we used to have a rule that you couldn't wear a hat inside a building. Um, so the guys were asked to take off their ball caps or whatever when they walked inside um, any building on campus. And so this student chose to argue against that rule. So um, his introduction is pretty poor, and I'm not going to spend time reading that. You can read it on your own. It's, and a lot of these problems are just grammar and style issues. Um, I do want you to see that he uses first person. I believe that I should have the choice of wearing my hat, my hat inside and that restricting headwear should be done away with. Um, so, and I hope you can feel the tone that comes along with that first person. So in this first paragraph, I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to read every part of this paper for you. His main problem here is that he uses some really poor logic. He says, it's understandable to require me to remove my hat before I enter chapel out of respect for God, but not in the cafeteria. The cafeteria should be a comfortable, casual dining experience. 
if we are required to entertain this rule of etiquette, why not others? Why not have me eat a formal meal for every meal of every day? Now that's poor logic because wearing your hat indoors and eating a formal meal, that's not the same thing. Those aren't even parallel. Um, wearing your hat inside, and again, I know this is a little old fashioned, but it was kind of something considerate as far as like opening the door for someone. That's being considerate. Um, and that's what he means by etiquette. Eating a formal meal, that has nothing to do with etiquette. Like that's, that's a very bizarre comparison. And I'll say too, you really want to avoid relying on questions for your argument. Questions are a weak form of argument. Um, and I know it's a rhetorical question, but still that's not, it's not very strong. Okay, let me read you a little bit of his next paragraph. He says, the next logical question is, why should I be allowed to wear a hat inside? Hats and other headwear have many uses. Hats can be used for warmth, style, or to cover up a messy head of hair. Some mornings I wake up and do not feel like showering immediately. So I would love to just throw a cap over my unruly hair and be on my way to class, but not here. Due to some ancient etiquette rule, I have to get out of bed, fix my messy head, and then go to class. It sometimes make me waste, makes me waste time and I'm late for class because I have to take five minutes instead of five seconds to fix my hair. And then he talks about an RA telling him to take off his hat. So I hope you guys can hear the problem with this example. Do you guys hear that kind of whiny tone? I had to spend five minutes fixing my hair. Me. Um, and so it's just not very strong argument. He's relying on his own narrow perspective, um, and he doesn't take into account any other perspectives, um, and it's just not strong reasoning. It's, it's really just based on his feelings and his personal experience and um, not really any actual logic. So this is the main reason I want you to avoid first person because it can really hurt your tone and make you come across as um, just kind of whiny or just overly emotional about something. And then in his final paragraph, this is another thing sometimes people do, and we talk about this, this happens often, is he drifts away from argument into process analysis. So he's like, how do we solve this problem? And so he thinks, and this also dates the paper $18,000 a year, so this is a while ago when tuition was a lot lower, um, he says, I'm a student and we all pay money. So if we all sign a petition, North Greenville will have to change the rule. Was well, that a reason that he shouldn't, that the rule shouldn't exist? No, this whole paragraph totally does not support his essay at all. It doesn't support his argument. It's a completely different topic, how to gain the ability to wear hats inside of school. So don't do that. Don't drift to process analysis. Every single one of your body paragraphs should be a reason that supports your thesis statement, your claim. All right. So honestly, I think the main issue with this essay is the student probably wrote it at the last minute and didn't really revise or proofread it very well. Okay. Um, so let's look at a good example. All right. I'll give you a positive example of um, strong argument. And again, the main thing I want you guys to take away here is tone. So this is an example about how to write an argumentative essay without using first person. So decent introduction. He could have talked more about the controversy. The, the controversy this student is discussing is the issue of should children be involved in athletics. And um, most people are okay with that, although there are people who are against children being involved in competitive sports. It makes them too aggressive, puts too much pressure on them, they could get hurt. So it is a controversial topic, and his thesis statement is great. Children should be involved in some type of athletic event. So let me read um, this first paragraph. He says, a major benefit of athletics is the physical effect it has on those who participate. A growing epidemic in America today is childhood obesity. Children actively involved in athletics are better equipped to fight this trend. Athletics help people of any age get in shape while doing something fun. They are more effective with children because it is easier to motivate a child to shoot a basketball or kick a soccer ball than it is to motivate a child to participate in a strenuous workout, such as crunches or running on a treadmill. Though they may not have the desire to become a professional, most children do like playing sports with friends. 
So vast difference in just the tone of the argument. This person is objectively discussing um, this topic without letting himself enter the picture at all. And that's much stronger. I hope you can see how much more convincing that is. Um, and I hope you can also see the link between his topic sentence and his thesis statement. Children should be involved in some type of athletic event because of the physical effect it has on those who participate because it's going to make children more physically fit. So he talks about sports also help teach children discipline. And he gives some examples of that. And then he does um, some rebuttal here. A concern for many parents is that their child will be injured. Um, unfortunately, that is a possibility, but there are many ways to avoid that. So he kind of uses that as his rebuttal. Um, I want to show you an even better one, though. Um, he talks about social advantages. This is good, but this is the other paragraph I really wanted to read you. He says, something most people do not realize is that sports teach organization. Some would argue that a sport takes up too much time for their children to keep up with schoolwork, but this does not have to be true. Playing a sport will teach a child to make the most of his time. By being organized, he can balance both school and sports. It does get stressful, but life is stressful. The earlier a child learns to be organized, the better prepared he will be in life. Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of it. But I want to point out what the student does here is, and you can see the edge of my comment, good rebuttal, is he acknowledges that it can create stress. All right, being involved in competitive sports can um, be taxing on a child's schedule and can be a little overwhelming at times. He says that is true. However, um, the child can get through that, right? He'll learn to be organized. He'll learn time management, and it will actually teach him better organization. And so that is what we call a rebuttal because you're acknowledging that there are some weaknesses to your argument. There is a good point on the opposing side, and that is something I would like to see in your essays is that you acknowledge um, the other side of the argument, okay, and provide your own rebuttal for that for that point that they make. Um, so again, I'll scroll this up here so you can pause and read the rest of it. But hopefully that just gives you an idea of the type of writing I'm looking for with these argumentative essays. And let me know if you have any questions.